Right, ready to record, mic set, background, testing, testing, one, two, three, hang on. Yep, all seems good. Uh, right, he said he was going to come and wear a New Balance light jacket and a white Adidas t-shirt. Hey, are you Hamish? Oh, for f <laughs> Yes, uh, sadly, Stevie has turned up uh, at Celtic Park. Uh, how you doing, mate? I'm good. It's not often we get to see each other in weekdays, Hamish. It's bad enough at the weekend, isn't I it? I know. I've had a rough enough week as it is without this nonsense. No new game, of course, just this, but I was still going to pull out the last minute, was I? Yeah, we, we are at a game tonight. Um, it's Thursday evening as we are recording, and Celtic women are playing Glasgow City in the SWPL tonight at Celtic Park, and the crowd's kind of building a wee bit. Um, we're going to make this uh, a bit of a preview for Saturday's derby against Rangers. Probably a bit of a half-hearted preview, is that fair to say? Uh, it's, you know... It's, I'm setting uh, him up, because he's give, giving it all the friendly patter all week. No. And I'm still sticking to that, because this is the first time, like, after the last four games against them, where I have felt, probably like everyone else, emotionally drained. It's going to be nice to go into a game against them and just relax a wee bit. You're not going to be relaxed, I can promise you that. I will be, well, OK, when the game kicks off, of course, and that first penalty that Tavernier gets in a few minutes will obviously be a problem. And I'll no doubt crack up at the referee's decision for that and VAR will help them along the way. But honestly, I'm a fairly relaxed for it, considering. OK, I'm glad to hear that. Um, you may have noticed that the, the sun, has, which has been out it's all day, has uh, literally gone down the minute Stevie turned up. So that may, may or may not be a coincidence. Anyway, um, yeah, we go into the game and, you know, it's another opportunity. We spoke about it yesterday's video with Scott McDonald. The team's kind of going for some records. Uh, 107 points we can still finish on if we win our last four games. How much of a kind of motivation is, is that for the team? It will be huge. That will be massive for them. I mean, Ange, great. I mean, you saw the attitude displayed after the game was won on Sunday. That Ange hasn't seen it as a jolly or the season's nowhere near done. I think it'll be business as usual for him. And the team have spoke all week about, or sorry, all season even, about wanting to break records um, and wanting to continue to improve on what they've already built on already. So I don't see this whatsoever as Ange or the team downing tools or going in jollies to Dublin <laughs> a few days beforehand. I think they'll be taking this as seriously as any other game against them, Hamish. I get that impression. I mean, we were here, literally here on, on Sunday after, after the game and the players are all leaving in their cars. There didn't seem to be too much of a a party going in the same extent that we would have had a party on Sunday night and had stinking hangovers nah, on Monday. No, it's not us. They, they, the team clearly went of that mindset and I just really get the impression that um, I honestly think for this team there's going to be a real um, just a real emphasis on, on trying to go out and end this season against Rangers. You know, our, our record against Rangers this season has been has been excellent. We've had positive results in all five games, and I include the the draw at Ibrox, which was a really good result. When you look back and see how that game went with the the late goal, and I just get the impression that going into the Lions Den, as as Mr. Gerrard would would have it known, <laughs> um, with no Celtic fans there, might in a funny way motivate this team. It might almost get their backs up a wee bit and siege mentality. I think Callum McGregor even mentioned siege mentality. He did say pretty much everyone is going to be against them, but. It's not going to take away, it's not going to like sort of ruin the focus and all that, because I think they already know it's going to be a tough enough game anyway. Like, look, fans there, or no fans there, I think they'll be taking, we're showing Rangers the obvious respect, but they'll be taking it ultra seriously and they'll be preparing the same way as ever, really, I think, Amish. I mean, you look at that game in January, that was a real bit, like, a real tough one for us. Now, Rangers had got into that, I think, one over the five games got into that match, just like we did in the festive period. Um, I believe at that point as well, like obviously you look at the we had 700 old fans there, but you know they were rampant in that second half, and you could hardly, I mean, the noise they were making was like it was absurd at times. Noise you were making in the pub during that second half. <laughs> nah, no, dear. no, but really, really well, and they had some mental belief to rally together, despite the fact that Juranovic went on to put in one of the worst performances we're ever going to see for a Celtic player there, um, despite the fact that as well. You know, all over the place at times in midfield and we no, there was just no rhythm to our game. We still managed to rally together and escape that with a point. And I think arguably that was one of the most important results of the season too because it really killed the momentum that they had. That would have been six games one in a row for them yeah. back then too and that would have been the gap down to about six points. Yeah. Still a couple of games against them to play. It could have been also different if it wasn't for Kyogo's goal. Spoke about that in yesterday's video. You clearly haven't watched it. Actually, I have now. <laughs> 
I know. Uh, yeah, we did. We spoke about you know key moments, and I think that Kyogo goal was was a massive moment in the season. Um, how, how much? What are the stats with zero fans at these derbies? Well, you, the Anorak here knows them. Thanks for that. I do think that the only point that's been gained from in recent years is in my lifetime when there's been no fans at no opposition fans at these type of matches was in 19, April 1994 uh, John Collins born. John great days um, <clears throat> John Collins scored at a 1-1 draw at Ibrox when he scored that memorable free kick yeah, I've seen when that. everybody was going mad for the Predators he was wearing after it then as well I think um, it was, you know, they, they scored like to be 10 minutes to go but yeah there was no Celtic fans there that day and in th- I think that's been the only game where there's been no opposition fans that the, the away team has managed to escape with a point since then well it's not just all about me, you round off the other one, so on you go. 1-0, uh, they won at Ibrooks, Andrew's first game, Hellander, header, uh, 3-0 game here, who can forget, 2nd of February 2022, and the recent one here, uh, 3-2, we won, and yeah, I mean, it it's obviously doesn't, uh, doesn't fill you with hope um, going into the game with, with zero fans, but honestly, if there's a Celtic team I would ever back, going into a game like this um, as I say with the kind of backs to the wall in a funny way even though we're champions it's funny going into an environment like that it would be this team my take on this whole no fans thing is that in a weird way it might help us thank you son um, not the newspaper <laughs> thought we were related there brother uh, <laughs> uh, I honestly think it might help us in a funny way they, see the atmosphere if we get an early goal at Ibrooks, it's going to turn pretty toxic they are at like their wits end with with that team, certainly the vast majority of that team. They've been beaten by his time after time, final this year, semi-final, league. And I honestly think at Ibrox, if we turn up and and get an early goal, and let's not forget this Rangers team, a lot of them aren't going to be there next season. They've kind of chucked it, almost like our kind of games in that COVID season at at Ibrooks at the end of two, the two games that we had. Even the Celtic Park one, but yeah. just that, that we were the first game after... They won the league, and yeah. I, th- I, don't, I mean, I know we were all watching for our living rooms. It was a draw, wasn't it? I was a one each draw. It was yeah. just dismal. I think for, getting in, for their fans getting into this probably reminds me of the way I felt. May 2010, we were talking about this just before we did this. The one Fortuny scored to make it 2 1, but I mean, that was just a game that I was gutted about going to. It was a horrible atmosphere. Their fans all night, even when yeah. we scored, were not caring one bit. So I'd imagine yeah. if we did to fans there, we'd be lost. Amazing. Up, imagine would, we had like the full broom one going for a big party after be, winning the league. would be some laugh, but yeah. you would hey even ho. enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, right, how, what, what are we thinking about team wise if I just let you take the floor and, and pick your team? It's no matter what I do, Andrew's going to pick the strongest team possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not simple. saying he's not, but who's going to be I would I would still keep the majority of the team that started like um, against Arts, but I would think for midfield, I'd like to see Tomoki Awata start. Right, can we just start Hart, Ralston, Hart, Ralston Starfelt, Starfelt, Kobayashi, Kobayashi Taylor. Taylor, McGregor. Now this is just what I, th- what I would go McGregor with. will play, yeah. Awata. Tone between Moy and O'Reilly, but probably go with O'Reilly for it. Okay. And then, <clears throat> tough one. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Jota back in the left. Jota in the left, Kyogo through the middle. And who, right? And I'd like to see a bad start yeah. on the right. Don't think it's, it's going to happen. Not great at a bad No, he's not. And at Hamden as well against yeah. them, he'd been poor. Although, can't we think of it, games against them at Ibrox. He started, no, he came on, did he not, in the 2-1 win back in April last season. He, he, was, he missed a couple missed of Missed a big setters. chance, he but two. he really, oh, he gave them a, he was right. a real nightmare. It was a handful but, for them that day. But does that day. not suggest he's better coming off the bench, maybe? But I take your point, I think Jota... Oh, I do and I don't and Maida on the left against Tavernier is really good and, and Maida's probably his best Celtic performance came at, at Ibrox at the start of the year he terrorised them that day you know he scored first the goal half. Uh, well yeah first half but um, Jota didn't start that game in fact I can't really remember Jota doing much well, at no, Ibrox no but he did come on and he rescued us that point yeah, yeah. it was his hard work for that goal I, I would go Maida left Jota right Kyogo through the middle midfield wise I, I'm, I'm honestly going to Break tradition and say that I'm happy with whatever Ange wants to do. Um, I think you know I don't think we can have any complaints if Iwata plays, if O'Reilly plays, if Moy plays. Um, I think McGregor will play and Hatati will play. I'm pretty sure on those two. Didn't want to interrupt, but regarding Kyogo, and I know that he came off with that wrist injury, 
last weekend, Jink, you'll be okay for I to that because I know we've not heard for the manager or, or anything as of this point. Yeah, I mean, by, by the time this video, I think this is going out Friday lunchtime. It's a bit of a kind of awkward timing for this game, hence why we're doing it in the back of this game um, that we're at. But I think um, this is going out Friday lunchtime, so you'll probably know shortly afterwards what the, the state of play is. Um, you know, it'd be great to have Kyogo fit. Um, part of me is just thinking, you know, if he's not fit, it's not the end of the world. I'd quite like to see O start a big game before the end of the season. Um, and, you know, it may, it may be a game, as much as yeah, we want the full team playing, it may be a kind of game to maybe see, like an O, or dare I say, a Burnaby even, um, you know, how are they going, going to get on? Because these are the players we hope are the, going to be the future of this Celtic team. Um, and it's, it's still a big game. You're still going to, you know, well, 50,000 if it's full. Um, it's still going to be a you know a hostile environment, and they're still going to want to try and beat us this season to end their season on a high. So, listen, as much as we're kind of talking it down slightly, I think we are both realising when we get up on Saturday morning, you know, the tunes are going to be on. Aye, they are. Uh, Atomic Kitten, what a band! <laughs> Brilliant. No, they are. Do, do you know what? I once I've got two of the Atomic Kittens uh, phone numbers on my phone. Natasha Hamilton. And the one that isn't Kerry Katona. I know this isn't related to the football, but how's it? How is this? I looked after Atomic Kitten um, for a day back in late 2018. Um, they were turning on the Hamilton Christmas lights, and my job was um, to look after them. Funnily enough, Celtic were playing Hamilton that day at New Douglas Park. I think we won three 0 and I was in Hamilton, but I couldn't go because I was looking after Atomic Kitten. Natasha Hamilton as well, which is kind of blowing my mind. Um, had uh, green and white hoops on, just the shirt she was wearing, and we had to tell her, or one of the other guys had to tell her, she, she, by the she, way. she couldn't wear it because it would inflame certain other people, and that wasn't scripted. Remind me to come back to you on that phone number part later, <laughs> right? <laughs> they were so nice, legends, right. legends. Right, that's the biggest deviation we've ever taken. Um, yeah, that, I feel like that's kind of summed up most of the, the chat. I'm just, I I'm, think there's I'm obviously a lot that I'm not sitting here sweating and getting my teeth with nails you're, talking you're not about even a watching game the, I against this You're not even watching the game with me, that's how chilled out you can watch it with your family. I'm going to go and watch it with my uncle and my granddad I thought it would yeah. be nice. And well, my uncle and my granddad are just as animated as you and the rest of the guys at the pub. Uh, yeah. But no, I think it will be a game that we'll be massively up for. And as you're saying, when it comes to Saturday, first thing I'll be texting you, we'll be talking about the team and saying how Andrew's got it wrong before he, <laughs> he romps to a victory or something. Yeah. Bye. Right, I'll be right up for it come the day, though. Listen, it's still going to hurt if we lose. Still really want to beat them. It's the one place we've not won. By the way, Kyogo is going for a record that I don't know if it's ever been done. But so far, he scored in both nets at Celtic Park against Rangers. He scored oh, in both nets at Hamden against Rangers. And he scored at one net at Ibrook. So if he scores in the first half, assuming we're playing into the yeah. normal end in the first half, then he'll have done that record. Um, right, it's getting very windy. Uh, just finally looking forward to, to this tonight, Celtic, um, Glasgow City. Um, we don't good. know what kind of crowd we are going to do. A wee vlog after this. Well, I am anyway, so you'll get to see the, the Celtic end and the crowd. And there's the speakers on now, so we should probably head in. But looking forward to it. Yes, I'm um, um, gutted that I'm going to be next to Hamish, but other than that, it'll be great. Right, okay. Good luck to the women. Thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone.
we were extremely, extremely disappointed uh, with our first half performance, uh, so unlike us. Um, I thought, the, obviously, the, the fans were incredible out of this world, uh, and I think the girls felt a little bit intimidated with the atmosphere. Um, the goal came from us giving the ball away way too easy, we, we, that's not us, uh, but... Um, uh, yeah, it's what happened. Go to half time one nil, uh, devastated, and then some very very strong words uh, were said at half time. And obviously, I, I will skip the swearing. But um, basically, the, the the summary was: I told the girls we don't deserve to play here. We are all year uh, demanding to play at Celtic Park, and then when we got the opportunity, we play like that. I say these nine thousand people are giving their night to come and support us, to come and cheer up. They haven't shut up for forty five minutes. And we play like that. I say, we don't belong here, guys. And pff, the reaction was super. Um, I mean, it was good reaction. I regret now saying it, but I, I thought <laughs> that was uh, needed at the time. And I'm extremely proud. I'm, I'm proud of uh, the club. Um, it's not easy to put a game like that with so many people in here. So I'm delighted. I know the world that go behind the scenes uh, and so many people at the club supporting us and, and behind us. So that's the first thing. I'm proud of the fans. Uh, obviously, it's not 60 plus like when when the boys are playing, but it's record. It's a record. Um, so they are there. They are behind us. We felt them, uh, and I'm so so happy to say that we won for them. And then ultimately, but not least, I, I, I'm so proud of the players. Uh, what a shift they put. Uh, second half, total domination. We scored three goals. It's so difficult to come back against them. They are a very well organized defensive team. Um, so we scored three goals and we could score two or three more. I, incredible. You've obviously had success at the club with, with silverware, but given the atmosphere tonight and playing so poorly in the first half and playing so well in the second half, would it be your, your best day as, as Celtic manager? <sighs> uh, so the two days, I mean, today was epic, but imagine playing a Scottish Cup final with we never won ever and playing with 10 players for 80 minutes and have chances with 10 men and the, or 10 women and then in the last in the last kick of the game basically in the last two three minutes score the winner against 10 players is is epic it's like in a movie and today was kind of like that because i was absolutely devastated at halftime honestly i was sad and i wasn't sad only because i was seeing the league uh, going that's not what made me the saddest the saddest is nine thousand people here non-stop singing and we are playing like that Oh my God, that uh, that was very hard to take. Uh, but the good thing is, these players they love they love the share, they love the 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 club, they love the fans as much as I do, and you know they they make sure that everyone got them, uh, home with a smile. And you know, um, not only that, what a game, what a game, excitement, everything. It had everything, and it had the three points on our board, which is the most important thing. <laughs>